Hey guys, you asked for it, so you got it. Here's our first Buju tutorial, and we're going to show you guys how to take a nodal pan in Buju and bring that into After Effects. So for this tutorial, I'm going to show you how about 99% of Buju shots actually work. It's a very easy program, and you can pretty much go from your footage and into After Effects in about five steps. Now, it's important to know, Buju does two types of tracking. The first is the nodal pan. Basically, a nodal pan is where you're stationary and you're just panning the camera around. There's no actual 3D movement. The second is a free move, and a free move is where the camera is actually moving in 3D space as if you're walking with the camera. There's a couple things you want to consider before shooting a shot you're going to track. The first is making sure that you have a high shutter speed. Now, it doesn't have to be extreme, but about 1 over 60 to 1 over 120 is usually decent for tracking. You don't want too much motion blur because it can kind of screw things up sometimes. Um, as you can see here, we're going to be starting with a shot from Angry Birds, where Nika goes over to look at some barrels. And if you look here, there's a slight zoom in the shot, but Buju will handle that just fine. That's why it's so great. So if you're on a Mac, you can use uh, .mov files just fine, but if you're on a PC, you might want to consider uh, bringing your file in as an image sequence, because it tends to work a little bit better. Sometimes it crashes if you bring in video files. So make sure you're in task view for this. To change it, just go to the tab on the left side of the screen and change it from toolbox to task view. It gives you the options you'll need to complete this tutorial. So in Buju, you're going to go to import sequence, find your footage somewhere around here. Oh, there it is. Open that up. So since we'll be doing a nodal pan, you'll go to the track type and select nodal pan, not free move, but nodal pan. So the biggest thing that you want to watch out for in Buju is making sure that your frame rates are consistent between your footage, the Buju file, and After Effects. So you want to be checking that as you go through this process. And since there's a slight zoom in the shot, we have to double click on focal length, and we go to your range dropdown and change it from constant to varying. Pretty much everything from this point is automated, so just double click on feature tracking and hit start and it will go and it will track your shot. You'll see all these cool little dots show up on your screen. I don't know, go grab a soda or something. I'm gonna fast forward through the rest of this. Awesome, it's done. Well, that was fast. So, what Buju has done here is basically done uh, about a billion automatic point trackers for us, which we'll now use to generate our camera data. Doing this is the easiest part. Just go over and double click on camera solves. Make sure optimize camera smoothness is checked and hit OK. Looks like this is gonna take, oh, no, it's already done. All you have to do from this point is export them and bring them into After Effects. So as I said earlier, the uh, frame rates you have to watch out for and uh, the biggest problem with Buju is that um, sometimes it glitches out, well, all the time it glitches out and screws up your frame rate before you export it. So uh, under cameras, go to camera one, uh, drop that down and open your sequence, double click on that, and uh, reset your frame rate back to whatever it was supposed to be at, and hit OK. Now you're ready to export it. Go to export, select export camera solve, and you see a bunch of options here. Uh, make sure you have a file path set up for your file. and make sure After Effects.ma file is selected. This is what After Effects reads. And under your scene scale, turn that to about a thousand. What this does is it makes it so that when you bring it into After Effects, you don't have to make extreme adjustments to the scale of your files. Boom, done, that's it. Exporting, 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 exporting. All right, now go open up After Effects. And once that's open, Find the files that were created in the finder, the .ma file in your footage, and drag those into the projects window. The .ma file will create a composition for you that you can use. So open the composition up, and as you see here, all those little tracking markers are imported into After Effects as well for your reference. And the first thing you want to make sure you do is check the frame rate. See, even it changes here. So, put that back to whatever you were working in, hit OK, and once the frame rate's changed, all you have to do is drag your footage into the comp, and it should look perfect. 
If it doesn't look perfect, you didn't follow the instructions. So in order to get your files to uh, move with the footage, they need to be 3D layers. So to test that out, create uh, something or drag something in, an image, whatever, and uh, turn the 3D mode on for it. Now, you don't see it at first, but that's because the position is exactly at the camera's position. So adjust the Z depth a little bit to push it deeper into the shot. Once it's at a decent spot and you can see it, uh, you're pretty much good to go. Um, you might want to preview it to make sure everything is working. And uh, yeah, take a look. As you can see here, it is ready to go. All you have to do from this point is just drop your footage in there and it will match the shot perfectly. Usually we use Bougie when we have to drop bigger things into the shot such as um, a lot of fake objects. Uh, it's good for matte paintings when you have to replace the background or add to uh, elements in the shot. Um, it's also good for when you know you're going to have a ton of bullet hits and other effects uh, in the shot as well. If you just have like one little bullet hit or something you want to track, it's best to either use the point tracker or Mocha. So that's about it. I hope you guys learned something and enjoyed that. In the next tutorial, we're going to cover how to do free moves and bring them also into other programs such as 3D Studio Max. If you have any questions, hit us up on Twitter or take a look at the manual. It never hurts. Laters.